All right, hi guys. Um, I'm super excited to talk about this topic of attracting the right coaches to you because kind of a fun side story is that I was one star diamond for 11 months in 2015. And I was one star because I had that one diamond and then I also had my now fiance as a diamond on one of my legs, on the same leg. And so I didn't advance to two star until I built another one on the other side. So, and it was really hard for me to build that. And so towards the end of last year, around September or so, I switched my mindset from no more discount coaches. And with that being said, I do still sign discount coaches, but that's not my intention. My intention is to find those rock star coaches and attract them to my team and help them succeed. And so last November, I was a one star and now I'm seven star and I seven star qualifying. And I truly believe it's all about who you attract to your, um, to your team. And so today I actually have a presentation that I'm going to share with you. And it's a mix of how to attract quality coaches to you and also how to create a recruiting culture on your team so that you're not the only one that's advancing rank and getting to diamond and whatnot, but also you have teammates because hopefully you guys know that to become a six-figure earner or even to make a thousand dollars a month, you need quality coaches that are working the business, hitting success club, advancing rank, and all of that. So ideally, I'd love to see all of you guys at Diamond and have multiple diamonds in your downline. So that's what we'll talk about today, and I'll share my screen with you. And this actually is taken from Melanie Mitro. So the main presentation you'll be seeing is Melanie Mitro's, and then I'll just add in my um, personal experiences and what I've learned and what has helped me grow to where I am today. So I like this slide just quickly. The objective mainly is to how to recruit with purpose and strategy, not just discount coaches. And I think that so many coaches, especially the newer ones, like when I first started coaching, nobody had even thought of discount coaches, right? So we had to only attract people who wanted to work the business um, of some sort. Like I never used the term discount coaching. And so once that came out, I had, had a huge team of just discount coaches, which helped with volume, but not rank advancement. So this call objective is really to how to, how to get those rock star coaches rather than just a warm body to help you get eight coaches and hit to diamond and just get those discount coaches that will likely cancel in three to four months. And this is my favorite slide out of all of the ones that I'm going to show you. Um, so pay attention to this one. This is how do you identify your ideal coach? And the two quick questions that you can ask yourself is, first of all, who is it? You know, take some time, like 30 minutes, to sit down with a pen and paper and think of who is that perfect coach? Is it, it's most likely someone like you, right? Someone within your age range that is, you know, same marital status, um, mom, not mom, uh, even blonde hair, loves the color pink, loves the color black. <laughs> um, like think about what do they Google search? What are they searching for? What were your um, hesitations before joining? What were your body image um, issues if you had any before? So really get deep and think about who is the person that you want to attract and help on your team? And how would you describe that person? And I actually do, you guys may have seen avatar training. There's actual spreadsheets that walk you through all of that. So it says, like, what does your avatar Google? What does your avatar wear? Things like that. And so um, I can, if you don't have that, I can provide that to Miranda and she can give it to you guys. And that helps. It's just kind of like a guide. If you're just sitting down, you're like, I have no idea who I want to attract. So that might help. Once you have that person, and actually I'm going to show you my person right here. So this is actually, um, what's her name? The Lizzie McGuire person. I'm forgetting her name in real life. Brittany is the name that I chose for her because I didn't want to think of like her real name when I saw her. But I picked her because this is like the style that I typically wear and the style that like 
I want to attract. I'm not looking for anyone too glamorous. Um, I don't do much like I really I'm just thinking of myself. I love wearing like lipstick, but very minimal other makeup, um, casual t-shirt, skinny jeans and heels. So like that is the image of who I'm trying to attract to my team. And then you'll see on the right is a whole bunch of stuff from silly things like she loves glitter and her favorite color is hot pink to, you know, she dreams of traveling. She likes window shopping. And what's most important, I think, is down here at the bottom because, well, I'll just share a few. So she needs like-minded fitness friends. Before I joined Beachbody, I was on my fitness pal and I loved it because of the community and the culture there and how you could interact with lots of people. Um, Brittany, like myself, is not consistent with fitness and nutrition at this point in time. She thinks cardio is the only way to lose weight. She's not seeing results. She worries that Shakeology won't work for her and concerned about the cost to sign up. And the reason I mention those things is because I'm going to use this avatar every time I do a post. So every post of mine, I'm trying to attract Brittany. I'm not trying to attract someone who needs to lose 100 pounds because I didn't have that journey. Brittany doesn't have that journey, although that would be great. And I would totally help someone that needs to lose 100 pounds. Really, I want to attract this one person. And that way, even though it might seem like you're attracting fewer people to your posts, the posts that the people that you're attracting are those that are most likely going to relate to you. And one thing I heard recently is you want to have the me too effect. And the me too effect is where you create a post and your hopefully your avatar or your ideal client or coach reads it and they're like, oh my gosh, me too. That's exactly how I felt. Or this is how I feel right now. Or I'm in that exact same space um, mentally or physically or wherever. And so having an avatar like this will help you attract that person. And it will even help your posts. Like you'll see on almost all of my posts, especially my recognition posts, I have some sort of glitter on there or some sort of hot pink, you know, silly things like that. But subconsciously, I'm attracting those people to me. Okay, so once you have your avatar, and actually I recommend printing it out and having it like right next to your wall where you're looking when you're posting or having it on your phone where you briefly look at that just to, you know, if you think of a post, bounce it off of your avatar and say, would that person say me too? Or would they agree with you? Um, I have a coach who did the avatar and she's like, I love the idea, but it's just not working for me. And I was like, okay, so how often do you look at it? <laughs> and she was like, I looked at it when I created it. And I was like, okay, so how often do you have her in mind when you're posting? Especially about the recruiting opportunity. And she's like, yeah, no. <laughs> so if you do this exercise, it's the main importance of it is to use it you know it'll you can't really just do it and then put it in your binder you know do it and like actively look at your avatar every single day to make sure you're attracting that person then once you have that person you want to ask yourself five questions um, the first one is who is your target audience which you kind of talked about how will you be introduced to that person so is your person a social media guru will you meet her or on Instagram or on Facebook, or is she more so into meetup groups? I don't know where you guys all are located, but in Boston, we have meetup.com, which is for networking, but you can meet up and play kickball. You can meet up and do rock climbing or cooking classes or you know, just go out for some drinks with people in your neighborhood. So will you meet them there? Think about the different locations that you could run into that ideal co coach or client. What are their biggest burdens and the problems that they face? So like my avatar, she's not seeing results at the gym. She um, thinks that cardio is the only way to lose weight. So that's why it's important to really mostly think about what were your hesitations because that's what like, the people you're attracting will feel as well. Um, most importantly, how do you intend to affect these people? So how will you solve their problems? Yes, they feel like cardio is the only way to lose weight. How will you convince them that that's not true? Or they're concerned that they know they need to invest in their health, but $140 is just way too much. How will you solve that problem for them? And then what makes your offer better than your competitor? And think of your competitors not only as you know, other coaches on other teams, 
but also other companies. Like what makes you different than Herbalife or Isogenics or um, your upline, you know? And it's not even like your upline is a competitor because you guys work together and everyone benefits when somebody joins your team. But you want, people can buy, you know, 21 Day Fix anywhere. They can even buy it off Amazon. But they're buying it from you because of you, you know? So think about you and what, qualities you have that people would want to buy from you. This is, um, I don't even know if you can see it. I can barely see it. But this is um, Melanie Mitro's avatar, just as another example. Uh, married mom of three, has a boy and a girl, or three girls and a boy, um, a teacher, you know, so you include professions, never been skinny, always athletic and strong. Uh, you know, think of all, all different things. Like I said, a half hour strictly of focusing on your avatar. So that's really um, how to attract the right person to you is knowing who it is, asking yourself those questions, and also don't be afraid to actively reach out to them. I'm always so amazed when people, when I ask people, how many people have you invited specifically to the coaching opportunity? And so many coaches are like, huh, yeah, I've never done that. Or I did five this month. <laughs> I'm like, if you're not actively inviting, not only to a challenge group, but specifically to the coaching opportunity, then that is how you'll attract them. If you invite them to a challenge group and at the very end you say, oh, I think that you might be a great coach or do you want to be a discount coach? That's what you're going to get out of them. You know, they're going to slowly start a challenge group. They're going to just get the discounts if that's what you tell them. Or they're going to slowly, you know, work their business if they end up falling in love with it. But when you reach out to them, and here's another side tip. When I reach out to someone, I compliment them, ask the question, and give them confidence. So I would say something like, hey, Miranda, I've been seeing your posts on Instagram, and you are honestly so inspiring. I love that you work out with your son. Have you ever considered fitness coaching? I think that you would be incredible and inspire so many people than you already are. Would you be interested in learning more about joining my team? And that's even long. You could just say, I've been seeing your posts, and you're such a rock star and so inspiring. Have you ever considered coaching? I'd love to work with someone like you on my team. You know, so compliment them on something that you see, ask the question, and then give them confidence or why do you want them on your team. When I've approached someone with that, I've never had a negative response. Some people do ignore me, but they always get back to me eventually. And when you're presenting, like leading with the opportunity, they want to know more about the opportunity, not just the discounts. So keep that in mind. Don't I say like do it every day or spend two to three days a week where you send out five invites just to the coaching opportunity. Okay, so create a monthly marketing plan. I'm very much an emerald um, gem if you guys take the gem test. And that basically means I need like a to-do list, I need a calendar, I need all of that stuff and I need to have it strategized before I start. And despite that, I never really created a plan of action to, for my upcoming month. So I was kind of, when I was recruiting, I was like, okay, it's the second half of the month. I haven't done a recruiting post yet. Um, I'll whip one up right now, you know? And then three days later, I'd be like, oh, okay, I should do a different one. It was very like off the seat of my pants kind of. And so creating a monthly marketing plan will help you strategize and make it so much easier for you guys, especially if you have a full-time job or you're super busy. Having a plan will help you with that. And what Melanie and I both do is the first two weeks of the month, I advertise a challenge group. And so I'm really just focusing on, you know, posting about a group, what will they get in the group and attracting those types of people. The second half of the month is when I switch to coaching. And that's because I have a new coach training group that starts the first Monday of every month. So I really just focus the last two months on you know, promoting that group. And one tip here that has helped me immensely is coming up, and this might be the next slide, is kind of this, is coming up with a theme. So, one theme that I first did when I started implementing this was turn your fitness into your business. 
this month I'm trying to do something around entrepreneur. So like employee to entrepreneur, um, busy mom. There's so many you can do with busy moms, like busy moms, um, make at home income or, you know, um, turn your busy lifestyle into a free lifestyle, build your freedom, you know, think about any type of theme, but again, make sure it relates to you. I don't have any kids, so I'm not going to do anything about being a busy mom or, you know, driving kids to school, like work your business on the side. You know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be doing something more like, you know, build your freedom or be, be an entrepreneur and an employee. Like you don't even have to want to quit your full-time job. Think about what you would be attracted to and who you are, and that's who you'll attract to your team. Um, I think that's it about the plan. Oh, and one tip is once you come up with your theme, again, spend like maybe 30 minutes or less thinking of your theme and then open up your app that you use to create posts. I use Rana and create three to five posts at the same exact time. So upload the photo and um, what did I do? Oh, with Build Your Freedom. It was just after we got back from the cruise. And so I had lots of cruise photos. And I, I chose one photo. I put a gl gold glittery background. And I said, Build Your Freedom. That was one that saved it. I uploaded a different photo of me and a few coaches that, were, that came with me. And I said, again, gold glittery background, Build Your Freedom, um, new coach straight training starting April second or whatever the date was, save that. So basically I created four different posts, different images, but the same theme. And it does take a little bit of time, but you have the post ready so that you know, okay, it's April 28th, a couple days left in the month, I need to do a post right now. I'll upload it right now. And also it helps because you're in the right mindset. So you have the same theme consistent across all posts for the remainder of the month. I don't know if you guys have a blog, but Melanie does, and what she does is she writes a blog post advertising the new coach training. So with this, you can kind of catch a glimpse here, and the key is not just to say, welcome, my team is having a new coach training, you'll hit the ground running, here's everything you get. The tip here is to start off with your story. First, you want to connect with someone and have that me too effect. And then you want to say, okay, how can I help you? Or what can I give to you guys? And then this is, keep in mind, this is all before she actually launches and does any of her posts. So she creates a blog post. She creates a, like a two minute YouTube trailer for um, what the group is and who she's looking for. She creates all of those images that I just talked about. She sets up a business opportunity call, um, which every month is same content. She just switches it to the theme of the month. And then she sets a date for the sneak peek. Um, a couple different ideas for you guys on the sneak peek. Um, for me, my team used to have a five-day group with that I co-hosted with all of the diamonds on my team. Not all of my diamonds. It, initially, it was. And now we just have, I think, four or five other diamonds that... Um, host it with me and we each choose a day and we make it a video so that way we attract people that like to read things through the text but those that are also visually inclined they get to watch the video so every day it was a new video on a different topic we liked that but um, it just got to be like it wasn't that much interaction and we would tag people for the remainder of the month that were interested but didn't join we would tag them and so like everyone was getting notifications when we kept tagging people and that was annoying so what we moved to recently is setting two um coach sneak peek one hour events so we do one on sunday morning and we call it the coach coffee talk and we do another on thursday nights which we've called the virtual pj party but we're thinking of changing it to something with wine because we took virtual PJ party from another team. And it's like, I don't know, my avatar likes to drink wine, especially on a Thursday night, like before or the weekend <laughs> um, and just wine in general. So we're going to switch up the name again to try and attract the right people. And in that one hour event, it's one hour where every five to six minutes, again, all of the diamonds, I think we have six diamond co-hosts in there that upload a different um, type of content and it's all uploaded on YouTube so it's literally just copy and paste and we talked about 
One is what do we do? One is the time commitment. One is how do we make money, the cost to join. We cover it all in one hour. And we find that for our team, that gets more interaction. People, if they join in for that one hour, they're commenting a lot. And even if they can't join, we just send them the link and everything's all there. Um, and then another idea is actually in your online office, there's a um, business opportunity webinar, which I've also used. And that is nice because it has slides for you that I actually suggest you like use your own pictures and upload yours and make it a little bit customized to you. But that's a webinar where it usually takes anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to pitch it to anyone who wants to join. So you would more so promote that as like a, hey everyone, starting April 28th at 9 p.m., I'm going to be talking about the webinar or the opportunity through this webinar, kind of through Zoom or Google Hangouts. And if you're more so that type of person, you can do that. Okay, so keep in mind that's all before you actually go live and say, hey, everyone, I'm recruiting now. Um, and you have the opportunity to join my team. So now is when, okay, she has her blog posts, her images, the date of her sneak peek, all of that. And then she uses her blog post as the source of information. So when she shares on Facebook and Instagram and all of that, she's pointing people to her blog post. If you don't have a blog, totally fine. I don't think you need to redirect people. In fact, sometimes that kind of loses interest. Um, so if you do, just include everything right in that post. You can also do a coach application. I don't consistently use this, here and there I do, but this is really so that you can ask questions where you can learn more about your potential coach before you even talk to them. And it's also a way to weed out those that aren't very serious about coaching. The ones who are serious about coaching will take the time to fill that out. Um, also, talk about it daily for one to two weeks. Um, she again points it to her blog post, but you don't need to. As long as your as long as your followers see your post and they know that they can join you and they know that they can apply, that's all that matters. So keep talking about it and do intentional recruiting posts, which you'll see probably the next slide, and also unintentional. So intentional is join my team, build your freedom, like having those theme posts. Unintentional is taking a selfie of you while walking your dog outside and talking about the freedom and that you love that you can work when you want and where you want. Um, no real call to action in that, but it's just you're always, constantly, every single day, posting about the opportunity and what you love. And then when you do have a call to action, people will be so, if you have that Me Too effect, people will say, oh my God, yeah, I wanna work when I want and where I want and with who I want, you know? So intentional and unintentional recruiting posts. And you can also create a sense of urgency. So for example, my next new training group starts on May 2nd. So that right there is a sense of urgency. Listen, everyone, you have three days to sign up. Or I could even say cutoff is April 29th to get registered for the May 2nd um, coach training group. Or you could say only three spots left. Create some sorts of urgency so that people don't think it's an open-ended um, time that they can join anytime they want. Here are some examples that Melanie has had. Um, these are, I think, to me, these are all unintentional, right? So busy woman tips. Her theme this month was being a busy woman and being an entrepreneur at the same time. This one, she's attracting people who drive their kids to school or drive their kids anywhere, I guess. <laughs> you know, so if, again, every single post needs to have your avatar in mind. Okay, so this is how leading a business opportunity call uh, post could look. You want it to be kind of official so people know it's, you know, you will be the person leading the discussion and um, telling them about the opportunity. And hosting one of these gives you an extra level of credibility. You're no longer just, I'm a coach and I have a couple coaches on my team or I'm no one on my team and um, I'm really good at this and you guys should join me. Instead, you are putting yourself in a leadership position. You're saying, even if you have no coaches on your team and you host one of these, you're saying, listen, I know what I'm doing. I know what a coach is, what a coach does, how I will make money. I know all of that. You are, you're a leader in this case. 
Um, it also helps people take the leap of faith to join. And I think it's because they, if you do it through Zoom, they can see you. And if you're just doing it through a phone call or whatever, they can at least hear your passion in your voice. And having them see you or hear you is you cannot get that through social media in a post. People just read posts and skim through it and keep reading. But if they hear how excited you are when you say what you love about it, it it's a whole different level of attracting people to you. You can choose if you want to run them monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, totally up to you. And I also encourage you, if you do the webinar, record it and put it on YouTube. Or if you do the one-hour events or even a five-day group, whatever you do with your videos, record it and put it on YouTube because people will, can reference that after the fact. So even if they don't join your event, you can say, totally fine and understandable happens to me. Here's the link to watch. Okay, so this one is um, an example of an event that she created um, that you can also use for you know, a webinar or any sort of event. You always want to have something to invite your team and your potential coaches to. If you just say, join my team, and you know, there's no event or sneak peek or anything where they can get more information, it's not you're not going to attract the people that will want to know the ins and outs and actually work the business. So another way is just to put yourself in that position of leadership, whether it be hosting a webinar or even behind the scenes. If you're a little bit nervous to do that, start with a one hour event where you don't even need other coaches to do it. You just put together five different videos of what coaching is, time commitment, and specifically think of what were your hesitations. For me, time commitment was one, so I, I always make sure to talk about time commitment. Cost was another one, so I right out front, I tell them what the cost is. Um, so think about what were your hesitations and address those. And you can, again, record short little videos, put them on YouTube, and then just post them anywhere that you want. Also, post eye-catching images at high traffic times. So this is really important because if you post an amazing post. It's the best one you've ever posted, but you post it at 10 a.m. when people are either at work or, you know, feeding their babies or out for a run. No one's going to see that. So think, look at your posts now. Go to your, your news feed, or sorry, your personal page, and look at the times that you're posting and which ones get the most traffic. For me and most of people on Facebook, I'd say it's anywhere between 7 and 9 p.m. So I highly um, hesitate to post any coach recruiting or um, even challenge group recruiting in the morning or in the afternoon. Noon is the worst for me, so I know, okay, don't do that. I did try it once, so it's good to do trial and error, but if you notice that you're just not getting any interaction at 2 p.m., don't post it there. So save the ones that like you really want to get interaction on and post those ones at high traffic times. Also, use coaches as inspiration. Um, I actually loved this photo that Melanie did, and so I used it, <laughs> put my own picture there, put my own team name here, um, customized it a little bit, but I saved it and kind of reused it. So hopefully, you know, Beachbody is very copy-paste friendly. So if you ever see a post from someone else that you like, use it. Just make it your own at the same time. Don't just copy and paste, and definitely do not share another coach's image. When you share, they're going to go to that coach's page, not your own. To teach confidence to your team and to the people that you're attracting to your team, you want to shift the wording in your posts. So you can see here, she used mompreneur. Um, that's indicating an entrepreneur. You want, you, with that word alone, you're attracting people that want to be entrepreneurs. Um, also a cool thing is since I'm an emerald gem type, I'm very much attracted to to-do lists. So you'll hopefully see if you go to my page that I constantly am talking about to-do lists. And when I do a recruiting post, I will say, when you join our new coach training, you will receive little check mark, one-on-one -on -one training with me as your coach, a spreadsheet to help you with your daily activities, um, time management tips. Like I'll list out everything that they can expect to join. If you're not an emerald, maybe you are 
I forget which one's which, so like Ruby, I think, is recognition. So then instead of doing to-do lists, maybe say where in our new coach training, you'll get recognized for um, achieving daily tasks or, you know, even advancing your rank or something. Or if you're the fun type, I think it's Sapphire. Um, our, group, our new coach training is so much fun. You're going to get to meet other coaches and work with other coaches and achieve your goals together. Um, Pearl is you want to help people. So in our new coach training, you'll learn how to help as many people as you possibly can every single month. You know, so tweak the wording in all of your posts to attract that type of person to you. Post several times a day, which hopefully you guys are already doing. It, once you start having coaches in your downline, review your coaches' posts and don't be afraid to give them constructive criticism. For example, a lot of new coaches post you know, stock images from Google or even corporate images about like a challenge pack sale with the cost on it. As soon as I see a coach anywhere in my downline that has a cost on the challenge pack and what a great deal it is, I message them and I say, hey girl, love your post, but the fact that you're including the cost before you even have any chance to explain what it is, how valuable it is and why they might need it, you're kind of making people run away from you. <laughs> so instead, Maybe do the same post and remove the cost, or here's another example of something that would work a little bit better for you. Um, another thing I'm constantly challenging my coaches to do is when you see a really inspiring post on typically Instagram for me or Google, instead of saving it to your phone and reposting as your own, um, take a photo of you, a selfie, whatever, and post that same quote on that. That way, when people come to your page, they're not going to say, oh, they see like the at words of wisdom from Instagram. Words of wisdom is super inspiring. I'm going to go follow them. Instead, they're going to say, oh, I love that quote that Sam did. She is really inspiring. Not that website, not that other coach, but you are the person that is inspiring them. So put yourself in that position. And another tip here, don't share any posts. Copy and save it as your own. Okay. So recruiting for your team, track your recruiting success by the way of your success club base. And what that means is when you have coaches in your downline, your success club base is the number of coaches that you have reaching success club. So if right now, maybe you have all discount coaches, you probably don't have a success club base. It's at zero. So your goal for this month should be to get one of those coaches to hit success club or attract a new coach and help them hit success club. Then, you know, in May, spend all of May trying all of these new tricks that you're learning today, creating a theme, posting more about the opportunity, and your goal by the end of May would be to have two new coaches hit success club base or two coaches in total, and then three coaches. Always try and increase that success club base. I will say here that if you find that, you know, your posts failed horribly in May, nobody joined your coach recruiting um, events that you did. Your, your avatar isn't working for you. One month is not long enough for, to see any sort of success or to indicate any sort of success. You, the first time we did, um, like these one, the five-day groups and even the one-hour events, very few people joined. Now, people know about it, they know to expect it, and we get a lot of people joining. Um, the first time I did a theme, it didn't get any more interaction than when I did not have a theme. But now I've been consistently doing a theme, and I'm finding that more and more people are liking the post and actually joining my team. So I say give yourself three months, three or four months, of consistently doing all of these tips before you say it doesn't work for me. Make a list of your working coaches versus discount coaches so that you know that you can need to focus on them to help them reach their goals and set a goal each month, not only for you, like the number of coaches you want to recruit, but also the number of coaches that your coaches want to recruit. Uh, and then increase that goal each month. You should always be increasing. If you recruit two coaches this month, challenge yourself to four coaches next month. Never become complacent. You always want to fill your pipeline of potential coaches. For me, people rarely join 
coaching or a challenge group when I invite them. So my follow-up list is huge and I love it. I love following up because that's where people actually commit. And so you always want to continue to do these events and these posts and inviting people so that you can fill your pipeline where they might not join this month, but they're definitely joining next month or in six months after they have their baby or whatever. You want to have that pipeline. And constantly growing it simply means to, com to always be inviting people, to always be hosting these events. And that is it. And then at the New Leader Conference, the, um, they asked us to have three takeaways. And the ones that I thought that were really important when Melanie was speaking was, um, remember your avatar and their issues and what, how will you solve their problem? So write that down. How will I solve my potential coach's problem or my potential challenger's problems? That is why they will come to you. Also, create a place to invite to and be creative with this, guys. It, you could come up with something totally different, but always have a place to invite your potential coaches to and for your coaches to invite to. Remember that you, especially once you're an Emerald, you are no longer recruiting for you and like working your own little business. You need to help your coaches. So make sure you have a, a place, an event, whatever, to have your coaches invite people to it as well. And lastly, position yourself as a leader. Even if you are a newbie coach, you joined today and Miranda is saying, go recruit coaches. You should sign one coach in the next two days. You totally can. You need to put on your game face, pretend like you know everything, and realize that you do know more than the person who is not signed up yet. Even if you know a little bit more, you know more than that person. And if you're nervous to start recruiting people because you're so new, I always think it's helpful to put yourself not only in the leader position, but it doesn't need to be a leader and a new person right away or a teacher and a student right away. Instead, think of it as you want people to join your team so that you can run with them. You want to grow with them at the same time. And that's something I did right away. I just, I knew that I had to start recruiting people. And so one of the coaches that I got was um, a friend that I cheerleaded with in high school, but we hadn't talked in like probably seven or eight years. She ended up joining, and now she is a four-star diamond coach, and we've grown like together at the same time, so, which has been awesome. Like We bounce ideas off of each other, and it's great having that person that joined at the same time as you. So don't wait until you feel like, okay, I got a handle on things. Because one, you'll never have a handle on things. <laughs> things always change. You are always growing. Always new ideas are coming up. And two, it's a lot of fun to have coaches right away that want to run with you. So that's it. <laughs> Girl, I took, I mean, I was there, and I still took so much away. <laughs> I mean, wow, I, I wrote down, like, tons of stuff. <laughs> Good. To the hap it's so funny because it came at a perfect time because I was trying to revamp just everything I was doing. This just reminded me. And it's really so simple. Like, yes, it takes some planning. But once your graphics are done, once you have your theme, it's like, it's just going to flow. So that's exciting. And that, that's um, something I was reminded of, you know, just plan. You got to, hello, get back to the basis, basics and plan. And I think that's going to be huge next month, mm -hmm. even right now. But I already have ideas. And I was, uh, yeah. I was like thinking about when you said the hour, I was like, oh my gosh, happy hour would be fun because I love my wine too. So yeah. <laughs> and people do that. I'm like, happy hour, that would be fun. Just yeah. A cute name like that. So um, do you do an event or a group for that? Like, do you do an event page and then every, you post in there or do you do a group still for that? For that? Yeah. For my one hour events, we do a, pu make sure it's public and an event. Um, and that way people who even say interested, not interested and going, all those people still get notifications when you post in there. And if it's public, people who, uh, like friends of friends that weren't even invited can still see the posts. Okay, cool. Does anybody else have any questions? I know we took a lot of great content, like I'm so excited about this. Um, <laughs> if there's any questions? So you post your, she asked if you post your videos in the event. Roxy. Yes. Yep, right in the event, and they are on YouTube. Um, and we have, I can provide you the script that we use. I, we took it from Nikki Whiting, so it's just kind of reused and again, customize it to um, what you guys have, but we just copy and paste it. It is a YouTube video, but um, you could also just like drag and drop a video in there. Yeah. Cool, yeah, send it my way and I'll post it in the group for everybody. Okay. 
to see this. Uh, yes, Hilary Duff, whoever said that. Allie said mm -hmm. that. Hilary Duff. <laughs> that is my avatar. But what I did to find her is I just searched for skinny jeans and gray top. And yeah, then she popped up and I was like, sweet. I, I printed it. I'm going to stop recording.